Hey guys, today we're going to talk about capacitors in series and in parallel. But first, let's talk about what a capacitor is. A capacitor is two conducting plates separated by some distance but connected to the same power source. And this creates a separation of charge so that on one side we get a net negative charge and on the other we get a net positive charge. And this is a useful way to store charge. There are two formulas we use to measure the capacitance or the strength of these capacitors. The first one shows that the capacitance is equal to the charge or the coulombs per volts. So a greater capacitance will have more charge stored in it. The second one relates to the plates, their area and the distance between them. So the greater the area of these, the surface area of these plates, the greater the capacitance. Also, because the distance is in the denominator, the greater the distance, the smaller the capacitance. So if we want to maximize our capacitance, we would want a large surface area and a small distance between the two plates. Now the units we use for capacitance are the, in, is the farad, and it's equal to one coulomb per volt. And that's a lot, so we usually measure farads in microfarads. We measure the capacitance in microfarads. And there are two ways that we can combine capacitors when we're using them in a circuit. The first that I'll go over today is capacitors in series. So here we have two capacitors. Notice that we draw capacitors as two line, two equivalent lines separated by some distance, really similar to the idea here where we have two plates separated, separated by some distance. And we'll label this capacitor 1 and this capacitor 2. Essentially what we have here is, if I can redraw this, one, capacit one large capacitor, or at least the distance between the two plates is large. And so when we have capacitors in series, that's effectively going to decrease our capacitance because the larger the distance between the plates, the smaller the capacitance. And the formula we use to determine the capacitance of this system is the inverse, the sum of the inverses to the negative 1. So it's a lot of inversing, but we sum the inverses, and then we take the inverse of that, and that gives us the capacitance in series. So let's plug in some values. Let's say C1 is... 1 microfarad, and C2 is 2. So let's plug that in here and there. We've got 1 over 1 microfarad plus 1 over 2 microfarads. And that's 1 and plus 1 half, that's 3 halves. Take the inverse of that, and we get 2 thirds microfarads. And that would be the total capacitance for this combination of capacitors in series. Now, don't forget that we're going to move on to capacitors in parallel. So, here we have a rough sketch of capacitors in parallel. And the way that I like to think about it is we effectively have one big capacitor with a huge surface area. And so if we have a large surface area, we can expect that the capacitance is going to increase. So it would make sense that the total capacitance for capacitors in parallel is equal to oh, the sum, if that's C2 and that C if that's C1 and that's C2, the sum of C1 plus C2. So that's pretty straightforward. I don't think I need to give an example of values, but it can get a little complicated if we combine capacitors in series and capacitors in parallel within the same circuit. So let's give an example of that. 
we have this circuit diagram. And we'll label this C1, C2, C3. This might look a little intimidating at first, but if we look closely, we can see that we have here capacitors in series. And if we were to make these capacitors in series into their equivalent, which I'll redraw here, this is redrawn right there, we see that they now are in parallel. So really what we have here is capacitors in series and in parallel. And we know the formulas for solving both. So let's first solve for this part. The capacitance of this would be 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 divided by negative 1. And well, to the negative one. And then, for this other part, since they're in parallel, all we have to do is add, let's show this in parallel, we need to add C1. So if we were to plug in values for this, let's say C2 is equal to one microfarad, C, sorry, C2 is equal to one microfarad, C3 is equal to 2, and C1 is equal to 3. Then, plugging in those numbers here, we would get 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 3. And we determined earlier, even though I erased it, that this with 1 and 2 being the, the capacitance of C2 and C3 is equal to 2 thirds. So let's just substitute that here. 2 thirds plus 3, we've got 3 and 2 thirds microfarads. So why do we bother with all this? Well, capacitors have several uses. Since they're effectively storing charge they're like a temporary battery. So some uses for them are remote, some flash cameras, and even AEDs. And if you have any questions about capacitors or want to learn more about their uses, here are the websites that I used to create this video. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.